Welcome back. Now, Nuama Private has announced the launch of its operations in the Dubai International Financial Center, and they also have plans to expand their business to Singapore in the next quarter. Now, Alok Segal of Nuama is joining us now to discuss this further. Alok, good morning. Thank you so much for joining in. But first off, I would like to ask you about the uh, expand the rationale behind expanding into the Dubai market. What are your expectations from this move? And if you can also couple that up with uh, telling us how big is this private business? as of now and what rate is it growing at sure thank you so much for having me uh, so uh, let me start with a quick background on the nuama private uh, business so today overall uh, and we recently reported our uh, results so nuama private overall uh, aum is now 1 lakh 90 thousand crores and nuama group aum is closer to now 4 lakh crores uh, making us one of the largest uh, wealth managers in uh, india today and uh, one of the uh, recent trends that we have been witnessing is that uh, one, Indian families are looking to, uh, for diversification, set up a base uh, outside India. And two favorable destinations that uh, Indians are preferring, uh, one is Dubai and the other is uh, Singapore. Uh, and there is a, also a very large interest that is uh, coming from you know, global Indians, NRIs, uh, who want to participate in the India growth story. So we being India specialists, we want to offer uh, India solutions to this diverse set of clients. And therefore, you know, uh, Dubai and Singapore both offer us great destinations. Uh, we've gone live in the IFC with a Category 3C license, which allows us a full wealth management operations in uh, Dubai. And similarly, in Singapore, uh, we received the wealth management license. Uh, we've become operational in Dubai. We have now a team in Dubai. Our office is in place and we're ready for business. Uh, Singapore, we should be ready by the end of next quarter. And hiring is going on there. Mm. Uh, Alok, congratulations on that. Just getting some numbers in. You said the AUM is about 1.9 lakh crore. When you reported a Q1 numbers, Nuvama Private reported a revenue 131 crore rupees a growth of about 11%. How large right. is the India private wealth market and what would your market share be? So if you see, uh, there is uh, data which is, uh, you know, reported in terms of, you know, the number of HNIs, ultra HNIs, and we can uh, keep on talking about that. But roughly, if you see the overall uh, HNI wealth in India is, uh, as per various reports, uh, which are, you know, in public domain, is between... 1 lakh 70 thousand crores to uh, sorry 170 lakh crores to around 200 lakh crores is the overall hni ultra hni wealth in india that is the uh, rough size of the market and uh, today if you see the entire wealth management industry is managing close to you know uh, roughly uh, 15 to 20% of this business so the organized wealth of this pool is only 15 to 20%. And of that organized wealth, we are amongst the top uh, players. So uh, the size of the opportunity in India uh, and the growth that is happening in India today, both through you know new entrepreneurs coming on board, existing entrepreneurs, uh, some of them exiting their businesses and new capital coming in, this market itself is growing at a compounded rate of 15 to 20%. And that is where the size of the opportunity uh, makes it very large. And for the larger players or all established players, actually the macro opportunity is very, very large. So that is uh, something that, you know, uh, I would look at that. I would look at it from that lens. So Alok, with this expansion in Dubai today and eventually even Singapore, where you are planning to set up shop, what would your total addressable market increase to? Do you have some, you know, when you set up a shop somewhere, you would have certain internal estimates of the kind of growth you will be able to achieve, the penetration. Can you share some of those, some of that working behind this move? So uh, I'll give you one uh, small data point. Uh, if I uh, look at the entire, just the GCC population, the when I say the GCC, it's the Middle East uh, uh, population, has 3.2 million addressable NRIs for us. And uh, that uh, population today, uh, as per our estimates and as per our own uh, internal research, today it does not have too much access to uh, Indian ideas and Indian products because a lot of these people have moved there 30 years, 40 years ago, and maybe 20 years ago. So while they still hold, uh, because in GCC you don't get the local passports, they still hold Indian passports, but their connection to India is actually just a travel. 
and uh, this this population is looking at a very serious uh, now opportunities to uh, put money in india and with the opening of the gift city allows us to have manufacturing at the gift city level which we can offer them products and ideas uh, to this population so first question is you know there is 3.2 million nris the second <laughs> bifurcation of that is that if i look at the ultra h nice and uh, you know the family offices based in uh, the GCC region, there is at least, uh, as per our research, there is a, a number of 1,500 to 2,000 absolutely large uh, ultra h &I base uh, that is there. And we estimate that the entire international business for us uh, over the next three to four years should start contributing at least uh, 20 to 25% of both revenue and PAT. Uh, we feel that the PAT contribution will be higher from offshore because one, uh, while the costs are higher there, the actual uh, margin uh, margins available also in offshore are higher. So that will actually balance out the cost. And we are confident of at least a 20, 25% top line growth uh, from the offshore business for us. As you mentioned ultra HNIs, Alok, would your target market only be uh, ultra HNIs or the NRIs or the persons of Indian origin or you'd be targeting those of other nationalities as well? And uh, what about the products to it? How is it, how's that going to look like? So I'll address the target market first. Uh, we, we will look at NRIs, people of Indian origin, HNIs and ultra HNIs. So you have a large, uh, uh, significant expat CS, CXO population there, uh, which is also some, uh, somebody who are professionals there, so private equity managers, entrepreneurs also are somebody we want to target. And then there are obviously the HNIs and ultra HNIs and family offices. So that is something that uh, we want to target. And uh, the product suite is obviously, uh, we are uh, tying up uh, with the local banks there in terms of the dollar ideas and dollar products. But the other idea is that we also uh, are beginning to offer them India alternatives, uh, India strategies, both public markets and private markets, both in rupee and dollar. Uh, because, you know, rupee, obviously, we have the entire product suite ready in India, and that is uh, just business as usual for us. Uh, but also, we are building out a very strong dollar platform. We've already launched two ideas on the dollar side from the Mama Asset Management. One is a long shot strategy on Indian markets, mm -hmm. and the other is a pre-IPO private equity uh, strategy uh, that we have launched. So we have started with two strategies. We intend to also do uh, real estate and uh, credit strategies uh, going forward because we are seeing a lot of demand for uh, these sort of opportunities in global markets as well, especially investing in <coughs> India for these uh, opportunities. So that is our day one product suite. and uh, But day two, as you rightly asked, that are we looking at other nationalities? The answer is yes. Uh, because as we are starting to uh, operate and we are also hiring bankers, a lot of these bankers have clients from, uh, you know, the, who are Emirati or uh, locals. And they're also seeking to uh, invest in India. We've, in fact, uh, been approached by certain uh, family offices of the GCC region who want to work with us and partner uh, you know, in accessing India. And we are seeing that also as a large opportunity. Uh, and that is something that progressively we will build that. Uh, but our day one day one plan is uh, NRIs and Indians. And this is our, uh, you know, step two or day two strategy, if I can say that. Alok, we leave the conversation here for now. July mutual fund data 